Changes in water quality um, and climate change itself um, has impacts on spawning phenology of different species, both freshwater and marine. Um, I have a list up here of some species, some pretty key species that have had changes in their spawning phenology in the Hudson and in the ocean. Um, but white perch has been has not been looked at. We have a really extensive data set on white perch with the HRBMP. Um, so this project is trying to trying to fill in that gap in um, white perch spawning phenology. Um, so looking at what's been going on with white perch in the Hudson River estuary, these figures are taken from Chang et al., which has been referenced quite a bit so far, um, and this. I'm not going to get into how these figures are created because Ming will get into those later on if you stay around, but um, they're modeled and um, designed based abundance indices for three different white perch life stages, eggs, yolk sac larvae, and post yolk sac larvae. Um, and what you can see is regardless of life stage, white perch abundance has been declining um, since the 1980s in the Hudson River estuary. Um, and so these shifts in white perch population dynamics and habitat use may be contributing to the decline, um, but we really want to aim to fill that gap in knowledge um, and understanding the white perch uh, abundance fluctuation. Um, so the three research questions we aimed to address in this research is first, has white perch and how has white perch uh, egg abundance changed over time? What are the patterns and drivers of white perch egg abundance in the Hudson River estuary ecosystem? Um, and has white perch spawning habitat extent changed in the Hudson River estuary ecosystem? So getting into how we did this, um, like I said, we used water quality survey data. Um, the water quality survey is an ichthyoplankton trawl survey. It had um, Tucker, Charles, and epibenthic sled. Um, it, started in 1974 to 2017, um, but we constrained the data set to just use white perch eggs, and for our analysis, we used, um, converted it to catch per unit upper, or CPUE, uh, which is calculated as count per volume of water sampled. Um, and then we filtered the data set to just include data from 1980 to 2017, um, due to some, at the start of this project, some concerns with data quality in the 70s. Um, we limited it to nighttime because while sampling was done both during day and night. Um, daytime sampling had a lot more inconsistencies with it not being sampled in the 80s and 90s, so just to have a consistent time series, we limited it to nighttime, and we used just empty bet thick sled um, to kind of simplify things more, and white perch eggs are demersal, so the sled would um, be the best gear for catching those. For the environmental data, we used the water quality survey data for temperature, dissolved oxygen, and conductivity. We had to universally create the data with depth based on river run because for the water quality survey, um, samples are taken at fixed stations in about three mile increments up the river. Um, and so to be able to compare it to our toes, we had to create the data. Then we used um, the USGS Hudson River at Green Island um, New York Station for river discharge because um, one, the station covers our entire time series, so that's great. And um, that station also accounts for roughly 70% of freshwater input into the Hudson River. Um, so how we addressed questions one and two was we developed a generalized additive model or GAM to predict egg um, CPUE using independent variables, and the independent variables that we considered were temperature, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, discharge, sampling depth, river kilometer, week, and year. Question three was has a little bit more of a complex methodology to address, so I'm going to walk you through a flow chart. Um, so first we calculated the mean CPUE for every river kilometer and every sampling year. And then we calculated the cumulative portion of CPUE for every river kilometer in the data set every year. Okay, uh, and then we used logistic models to predict the cumulative portion of CPUE. Um, for the river kilometers where 5% and 95% of the cumulative portion of CPUE were, were predicted to occur, um, we regressed it against the corresponding year. Um, and then that same extent where 
the predicted five and 95% cumulative portion of CPUE were then subtracted. Um, and that's what we used as our extent, like indicator of the extent of white perch spawning habitat. Um, and then linear regressions were used to understand changes in the upper and lower habitat extent. So getting into the results, uh, for question one, um, you can see from this figure that CPUE has declined considerably uh, from the 80s, and it's actually currently at historic lows. Um, question two had a little bit uh, more output. Um, so these are the GAM outputs. We ended up removing dissolved oxygen from our GAM because it, uh, the v variance inflation test that we ran showed that it's collinear with temperature. Um, so we removed the, that. Um, but then you can see that for white perch eggs, the CPUE, I want you to focus on the x-axis and then um, just the general trend, the y-axis. These are um, partial effects from the gamma output. But the temperature has a, a domed effect, so between about 10 and 20 degrees Celsius, white perch egg CPUE was the highest before dramatically dropping off in either direction. Um, white perch are freshwater spawners, so it's not super surprising to see that um, the highest CPUE was in the fresher areas of the Hudson um, with uh, lower conductivity. Um, they also had greater um, CPUE uh, with less discharge. Um, and then sampling depth also had a bit of a domed effect, although it should be noted that we don't have a huge sample size for greater sampling depth, so that's why the error bars are so big. Um, for river kilometer, fresh uh, white perch spawn up in the more northern regions because the southern portion is like near the batteries where the, the saltier water is. Um, and then spawning peaked around uh, May, which aligns with the literature um, because white perch spawn in the Hudson River between April and June, generally. Um, we also looked at the mixed effect of week and river kilometer for the CPUE of white perch eggs. Um, and so what this figure shows, the gray areas are where we, just, we don't have enough data, um, but the areas of yellow are, are spawning hot spots for white perch, and so, and blue are not good spawning areas for white perch. But so you can see that in the earlier weeks of the year and the more northern river kilometers are where white perch are spawning. Um, the most. Um, for question three, uh, looking at how white perch ex habitat extent has shifted, if at all, um, we found that the northern extent, which is the blue, um, has not shifted significantly um, in our time series. Um, it's right around just south of Albany is where that like 95% of their spawning habitat um, upper limit is. But the lower extent has shifted northward significantly over our time series. Um, at the beginning of the time series, that like lower 5% um, is just south of Poughkeepsie, and it has shifted now north of Poughkeepsie, um, and it's predicted to be increasing by 0.71 river kilometers per year. 